I'm very excited to talk to you all about this nonprofit. They're called Urban Ed Academy. And basically, they've been getting a ton of major buzz in academia, even from the Golden State Warriors, for their strides in making education better for everybody, every single student. They want every student to have a black male teacher at some point in their lives, preferably in elementary school. So I went to go see how they're making it happen. Welcome, ladies. So we're doing Color by Numbers. Okay, you guys have all, all the tools you need? Okay, keep it up. What's up, man? Throughout your K through 12 journey, did you have a teacher that looks like this guy? How you doing, man? You, you finished one? And by look like him, I mean black and identifying as male. I love how much like progress we're making today. Y'all are killing it. There you go. Statistically speaking, your answer is likely no. According to the Stanford Graduate School of Education, only 2% of America's teachers are black men. The National Education Association backs that up. Right. There you go. There's all kinds of data that suggests, especially for our black boys in particular, but for our students of color, if you have uh, teachers that look like them early as possible, there's all kinds of uh, gains that they have, and that has all kinds of implications for the achievement gap and then subsequently wealth gaps, things like that, because education is key to uh, you being able to actualize yourself in life. Jason Muse is a teacher at George Washington Carver Elementary School in San Francisco, but also a Man the Bay Fellow through Urban Ed Academy, an education nonprofit originally founded as a Saturday school to match young boys of color to mentors who look like them. Man the Bay takes that mission a step further. The cohort's goal is for every student to have a black male teacher before sixth grade. I was deprived of a black male teacher my entire stint in education in, until college. I went to UCLA and I actively sought that out. I had, uh, it was an African American studies class that I didn't even need for my major. You all operate here in San Francisco. Randy Saraguchi is the executive director of Urban Ed Academy. He says Man the Bay has 18 fellows between the San Francisco and Oakland public school districts and heavily recruits from historically black colleges and universities. So I want to make sure you guys are paying attention so that you don't, don't lose in the game. In order to make it even possible for them to participate as teachers, we have to anchor in a different type of teacher benefits package. And for us, that meant attacking housing. Urban Ed Academy covers all professional and living expenses for fellows while they go through the program, which is four years long. Those stresses distract from attentiveness to the kinds of things that you need to worry about in the classroom. Is my lesson plan devised so that I can maximize gains for my <laughs> students? Am I paying attention to which students are falling behind and which students aren't? Am I managing behavior in a way that's conducive to the social and emotional development of the students? I love that you raised your hand. I love how good of a job you did. Can you finish this? for me. All of those things play a role in maximizing what we can do in the classroom. And so what has been a godsend from Urban Ed is they're like, you know what, don't worry about your rent, don't worry about utilities, don't worry about those kinds of things. Bring your best self to work every day. So how does a nonprofit pull off free rent in one of the most expensive regions in the world? A little ingenuity, creativity, but mo most importantly, collaboration with big time partners, uh, starting with black homeowners and black property owners. Their strategy is to employ black spending power and keep black property owners in the community. As expensive as housing and real estate is here in the Bay Area, no, forecasting out how much we're going to spend, we know whoever we partner with is going to get a good chunk of change. And so to be intentional, we've been very blessed, but to be intentional about making sure that that spending power on our side rests with black folks, that was number one. Yeah. Um, there's conversations, of course, at the state level and the city level around reparations. Um, this is our little small way of trying to play a part in that. This Hunter's Point property has been in Martin Luther McCoy's family since the 70s. At one time, his father employed hundreds of black San Franciscans out of this building through a patrolling company. And my father was often asked why he had this office in this neighborhood. And one of his uh, strongest responses that I often remember him saying was, if we don't work for and hire each other, then who will? There's an office workspace downstairs and four educators live upstairs. They share the building with another nonprofit. What letter goes B? There you go. Good. Jason oh, Muse lives at another property just minutes from his school and in the same neighborhood as many of his students. 
from extracurriculars to seeing them in community centers to seeing them at church on Sunday, uh, getting involved at the local YMCA or whatever it is, right? And so your students can see you as a full person. Have you seen me DJ before? No, you haven't. No. Okay. One day, maybe one day. What's up? They even know he's a DJ on the side. Does he know songs that you like? Yes. yes. Like what songs? You got a friend in me. What do you like about Mr. Muse? He gives us computers, colors, even some snacks and cookies. <laughs> agree. You agree? Does he look like he could be your family? Yes. Really? You think so? Because we have the same skin color. According to the National Bureau of Economic Research, when black students have at least one black teacher by third grade, they're 13% more likely to enroll in college. Two black teachers, 32% more likely. For low-income black boys, their on-time high school graduation rate climbs by almost 40%. Man the Bay Fellows were the only black men enrolled in SFUSD's credentialing cohort for the 2020-2021 school year. Unlike most Man the Bay Fellows who come directly from undergrad, Muse has been teaching for over a decade. You know, the conditions of the pandemic have actually made it really difficult for a lot of teachers, and a lot of teachers actually left, and I was considering it. But this opportunity allowed me to kind of stay where I was uh, in education. Where it's clear he's needed. Reporting in San Francisco, Jovina Fortson, ABC7 News. What a great program. Fabulous. I was wondering, if they do get to own, could they then bring more people into the program and train more? Yes, so that's the goal. And that's partially how I found out about this story, as they just got a huge grant from the Golden State Warriors. So that is going to help them be able to purchase a property mm -hmm. uh -huh. in the city that they own, bring more teachers from across the country here, and really give them all the tools to stay. They find that's also some of the that's the hardest part here is being able to stay here. Maybe you get here um, and realize I cannot keep up. Yeah. So I'm so excited. The kids, everybody, I mean, <laughs> love them. They were so cute. Um, but when the little boy said um, he looks like he could be my family because yeah. we had uh. the same skin color, I, you know, it's just wonderful. Your so, heart just goes out. And yeah. as someone who grew up in the D.C. metro area, I had plenty of black teachers, but it wasn't until the fifth grade that I had a black male teacher, mm -hmm. someone who I could directly identify with, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bruce Anderson. He was such an advocate and a cheerleader. Uh -huh. We are still friends to this day. Oh, I um, and I can attest to this. Yes, this makes a difference, a huge difference. Same as someone from Atlanta, where there are a ton of black educators. Um, my first black male teacher was my music teacher, Mr. Jennings, in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't have another one until 10th grade and that was it K through 12 mm -hmm. and those you know the DMV DC Maryland Virginia for people <laughs> that don't know and Atlanta two regions with probably the highest populations of black educators for the rest of the country and especially I you know the numbers are bleak yeah yeah this is a good start though yeah absolutely I'm so excited about it so thank you for letting me crash the show for of a little course. bit